Hello, in this video, we are going to go over how to trade Forex and leveraged Forex in the Trader Workstation software by Interactive Brokers. This video is going to be very important because I'm going to show you guys a very good method of managing a bracket order that is natively supported in the TWS software. There's no need for any additional programming here. It's all there already in TWS. You're just going to have to take a few of the steps that I will show you in this video. And what you'll be able to do is have a position where you have a profit taker and a stop loss. And when the profit taker is filled, you will reduce your position quantity by as much as you want. It could be, say, 60% of your position. When that initial profit taker is filled, your stop protective order gets automatically adjusted to your break even price to protect your position. So if you guys want to hear more about this, stick around to watch the video. This is Virilo Trading, and we help traders navigate the tools, methods, and problems related to trading. Thank you for watching. All right, guys. So we're going to talk about a few things here. The first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is explain to you why it's important that you use this method for the safety of your trading account and why it's important in general for traders to use OCO orders or OCA as Interactive Brokers calls them in their platform. It basically is when you're in a trade, you have protective orders in place and these orders are managed on the server, meaning that even if you lose client side connectivity on your system, you'll still be protected. So there's another video on the channel that you can watch regarding this and it's called Wild Traders Should Use One Cancels and Other Orders. And you absolutely need to be using this to have more protection in your trading um, and protect yourself against weird things happening like positions getting reversed when they weren't intended to be reversed, okay? Everything I'm showing you in this video is intended to be shown to you from that standpoint where I'm prioritizing the protection of your trading account in the case of some very unexpected events to happen. So you have to take into account some of these problems. So that's what I'm going to address here in this video. Before that, we're gonna talk a bit about Forex trading in TWS and how you can do that. So there's two types of Forex trading in TWS and Interactive Brokers. One of them is just currency conversion. The other one is leveraged Forex trading. And you actually need to go ahead and activate those in the trading permissions for your account. So over here, I'm logged into the paper trading account. You have to be logged into your live trading account. Then you go to account at the top and you select set trading permissions and then it's going to bring you to your client portal dashboard and you'll have to go and enable the trading permissions for the asset classes that you want to trade so you'll select forex trading or currency trading and then enable the two options which one is currency conversion the other one is leveraged forex so we'll talk quickly about leveraged fx trading with ib from what i've been able to see they offer about a 40 times leverage on your portfolio value or on your cash balance that you have of course, you should never max out your leverage. You should always use a percentage of it just because it's not good practice to max out your leverage. You're just going to make their systems go crazy and you might risk you know, getting liquidated if the market just drastically moves on some kind of a news announcement. So don't max out your leverage. But what I've seen is it's around a 40 times leverage. And you can also test this by putting in test orders and then seeing how your maintenance margin gets impacted in the order confirmation window that you're going to see. In this case, the liquidity of this account here is $326,000. So assuming they're going to give us a 40 times leverage, let me just get out my quick calculator, two seconds times 40. So that means that we'll be able to trade about $13 million in currency without getting a margin call. But I'm not going to submit an order that big. But what I will do in this case is do about half of it. So I'll do about 6 million as a limit buy order there. And we'll transmit that. And what I want you to look at is the initial margin and the maintenance margin right here. So you can see right now there's no positions in the account. So the maintenance margin is zero. But when we initiate this trade, our maintenance margin is now going to be changed to $205,000. That means that the capital required for this trade to be initiated in our account is $205,000. And this assumes that you've activated the leveraged Forex trading permissions in your account. So judging based on the net liquidity of our account, which is 326,000, this is probably around two thirds. So in this case, we're using around two thirds of the leverage available to us in the account, submitting a buy limit order of 6 million uh, USD CAD in this case. So this is just an example of looking at the capital requirement for a leveraged Forex trade. Don't ever max out your leverage, just don't, okay? The next thing that's important that you know about is in IB, there's something called a virtual Forex position. And I'm sure you guys have seen this 
where you're looking at your account or your portfolio window and you see that your daily profit and loss is changing based on the value of the foreign exchange positions in your account. Most people prefer to turn this off because they're not actually trading the Forex. Let's say you're just converted currency and you're mostly a stock trader or a futures trader and you don't care about the Forex exchange, you'll end up turning that off at some point. But the thing is, if you start trading Forex, you have to turn it back on. So the way you do this is you go to your account, your account window, and I'm going to drag this over from the other screen and I'll scroll it down a little bit. And right here we have our FX portfolio or our virtual FX position. So as soon as you make a currency conversion in your account, there's going to be a position displayed here. So let's say you deposited some money in your local currency and then you converted it to US dollars because you want to trade US stocks or US options. It's going to show a position here. And the way you deactivate that is simply by closing this drop down menu like that. So now it's deactivated and it's not going to be displaying your FX position in your portfolio window. As you can see right there, the daily PL actually disappeared from our portfolio window. So like I said, if you're trading Forex, you're going to have to enable that because you do want to see now what your Forex position is. So you have to turn it back on. Now, one of the advantages of trading Forex or currency conversion with interactive brokers, I've at least found this to be quite convenient, is that the fees are quite low compared to a lot of other services out there. So other services, they provide like a percentage rate based on the amount that you're converting. The thing about IB is that it's always around the same amount so you can convert $1 million or half a million dollars or a couple thousand dollars. And it's always going to be a fee of around $2 US to around, you know, 275 US. At least that's what I've seen, which is pretty damn good considering if you want to exchange a large amount of greenbacks or other currency to greenbacks, that $2 fee is going to be really small, especially when you start converting larger amounts of funds. All right. So let's go on and show the method for moving a stop order to break even in TWS once your first target or profit taker has been hit or has been achieved. So there's a bit of configuration that's required, but it's actually not a lot. And there's going to be some limitations in TWS because that's just the way it is. Now, this is the only way in TWS to achieve what I'm about to show you without using any additional programming or using the API to code something custom, right? So this is natively supported in TWS. You don't need to code anything extra here. So the first thing that's required is you need to determine how you're going to be sending your orders. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be using the chart trader because I think that the chart trader buttons panel is quite a flexible interface and you can configure these buttons here to do a variety of different things and just click on them when you want to submit an order. So for example, if I click on this buy limit button here and then I drag my cursor on my chart, you can see that it is now prompted to send an order. Now, if I click on the chart here at a price below the current price, you can see now we're prompted with this bracket order here and you can also see the same bracket order in the quote monitor there on the bottom right of the screen. So I'm using the chart trader buttons panel to do this. Now I'm going to explain to you why this is important because you want to have some degree of flexibility in your order placement. So the way I have TWS configured right now is that if I right click on my chart and then select buy or sell, it's just going to submit a plain and simple limit order like that. Because the thing is, is if you start configuring default presets, with bracket orders already there, then you lose the ability to just submit a simple limit order. Let's say if you want to close your position or reduce your position size, for example. So I think it's important when you're configuring these bracket orders to give yourself some degree of flexibility. And that's why I've chosen to deactivate the bracket order for default buy and sell prompts like that. So if you just right click on the symbol in your watch list and select sell or buy, it'll just put up a simple limit order to start. And then at that point, you can decide if you want to attach brackets to it now. But normally when it comes to planning a trade and setting your profit takers and stop losses, I'm going to show you the method that I use for this now. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've programmed into this chart trader button right here into these two chart trader buttons. So what I'm going to do is right click on one of these buttons and select configure buttons. So now we see all the buttons that we've configured here in the chart trader. So you can see in our settings window here, it's under charts and then chart trader and then buttons. So I'll go into this button right here and you can see I've labeled it as buy limit order with scale out target and an adjustable stop. 
it's the same thing as a break even stop. So what this is going to do is when your position is filled, let's say the market moves in your favor to your first target. Let's say your profit taker is filled on your first target at the same exact time as that happens. It takes your stop loss that you had your protective stop order and it moves it to your break even price or one tick above your break even price as you decided to set it. So I'll now show you the settings for that. So I'm going to click on the button right here and then I'll go to edit. And here you can see we have our button text. We have the action that we've selected for the chart trader button to perform, which is buy in this case, it's going to submit a buy order. And these are the available options you can choose from. In this case, we're only using the buy option and the sell option for the sell order because we also set up an equivalent button for the sell side. And I'll show you that one as well. Like I said earlier, the reason why we're not configuring this right here, these settings in the order presets is because we want to maintain that flexibility of being able to submit a simple limit order without brackets attached. And if we want to attach the brackets, what we'll do is submit the order using this button instead. You can also use a hotkey or keyboard shortcut to do this exact same thing. So what you'll do is you'll take these exact settings and copy paste them into a hotkey configuration. So if you prefer to use a hotkey, all you do is you take this exact configuration and put it into your hotkey configuration. So when it comes to the setting up of the parent order, there's not much that takes place here. We have a buy order, the order types a limit order, and the limit price is chart trader price. Now you could do an equivalent example of this where the entry order type is a buy stop or stop limit order. And what that would intend to do is to get you in the trade once the market has achieved a price on the upside for a buy or achieved the price on the downside for a sell order. But in this case, I'll show you the example of a limit order because it's not going to be that different. You just have to understand what the difference is between an entry limit order and an entry stop order. That's more of a beginner topic. So I'm assuming that you guys already know what that is. So we have our parent order configured here and notice that the limit price is set to be chart trader price. This is what allows us after pressing the button to go ahead and click on the chart and select the price we want to submit the order at. That's a good feature to have because we want to click on the price that we want our order to be submitted at. Next, we'll go on to the target and attached stop orders. And this is where most of the magic takes place. So regarding the target order, it's a limit order as always. And our limit price is set to the parent order plus 20 ticks in this case. Now, Quick note regarding the options we have here. You can choose ticks, percentage, or an amount. Now for simplicity purposes, I would recommend using ticks just because it's easier to keep track of when you start switching between multiple markets. There's a feature here called apply offset to parent. It only works when you use an amount here. And it also only works if you're not using the scale out feature here. So in my opinion, it's not worth using that because you have to deactivate the scale out feature. And in order for what I'm showing you here to work properly, we need to be using the scale out feature in TWS because we want to make sure that when our target is filled, our stop order is adjusted to the correct quantity for the remainder of our position. And we are now left with the remainder of that position and it's protected and it can continue going in our favor and we can monitor it. And as long as it's protected, we're in a good situation. Okay. So it doesn't really matter if you use amount percentage or ticks here. In this case, I'm using ticks. So the target order is set to be 20 ticks. In this case, you can set it to whatever you like. Now, the scale fields here, I'm assuming in this case that my initial position quantity is going to be a $100,000. So my entry size of the trade is going to be $100,000 of US dollars against the Canadian dollar, whichever Forex pair we're trading. And the initial component size, what this is, is the position size of the first scale out target. The size of the first target order 20 ticks away from our entry price is going to be a profit taker order to reduce our position size by $60,000 or actually 60% 60 of the position. And then we have our subsequent component size and we've set that to be 20,000. So what this means is that we're going to have two more orders of $20,000 a piece each, which are further away. Now the distance of how far they are away is the next setting here called the price increment. 
And in this case, I have set it to be 0.005. And you'll see how this all works when I submit the example later. So that's what our profit taker is doing. Now we're going to go on to the attached stop order. And this is also quite important. So the attached stop type is set to the adjustable stop. And this is what is going to allow us when our first target order is achieved for the stop order, our protective stop order to adjust itself to our break even price automatically. So now our position is protected. So this is what it looks like. We have stop price set to the parent order minus 20 ticks because this is a buy order for the sell equivalent of this button. It's going to be your parent order plus 20 ticks. And for your limit price, it's going to be parent order minus 20 ticks. So keep that in mind. Okay, I'll show you the sell order example after. Now regarding the adjusted stop fields, we need to tell it how to adjust the stop price when the trigger price is achieved. So the first thing we have to set is the trigger price. This is the price that when it is achieved, it adjusts the stop, it performs the adjustable stop function. So what I've set it to is the parent order plus 20 ticks. That is exactly where our first target order is placed. So that means that when our first target order trades, or when it's filled, and if you want to make sure that it's filled, you could actually even apply uh, a bit more of an offset here, you could set this to say 21 ticks, meaning that it's going to be 100% probability that your target order has filled before the stop gets adjusted to the break even price, because of course, there is a risk in some markets that you get a partial fill on the profit taker, and then the stop um, adjusts itself. But the thing is, you will still be protected here because the target and the stop are one cancels another and they're automatically adjusting quantities. So if the target order is partially filled, the stop order will adjust its quantity automatically to the partially filled quantity to make sure that they're always matching the quantity. So there's no risk of a partially reversed position or some kind of erroneous trade that you weren't expecting. The next setting is the adjusted stop price, which is the price that your stop order will be adjusted to once the trigger price has been achieved. In this case, it's set to parent order plus one tick. Now, the good thing is, is that you can actually go in and adjust that trigger price and that adjusted stop price later on to make sure that in the case that you change the price of your parent order, that it's also going to adjust the stop to the correct price. Okay, so that's the entire settings that are necessary for what we're about to show here. And I will now show you the equivalent for the cell limit order. So I'll click on that and then go to edit. And you can see it's pretty much exactly the same thing, uh, except that the offsets here are reversed. So we have parent order minus 20 ticks for the target order, parent order plus 20 ticks for the stop order, because the stop order will be above our initial position because the sell order here is going to assume that we are entering a short position. And then the adjusted stop fields again here, trigger price is parent order minus 20 ticks and the adjusted stop price is parent order minus one tick. So now let's go ahead and show how this all works. Okay, so I'll bring your attention to the quote monitor over here. And you can see we have some data that's showing for each market that I have in the quote board. Um, but there's one column in particular here that says trigger. Now I'm going to right click on the columns there and I'm going to select customize layout. Then I'm going to go to the order columns. This trigger price column here, the way I got this was from the adjustable stop menu. So this is the menu that will allow us to get those parameters for the adjustable stop and basically view what is our adjustable stop trigger price and our adjustable stop price. So I'm going to select this right here, the adjusted stop price because we've already added in the trigger price. So for example, if I remove the trigger price, you can see that it goes back into that menu. So I'm going to add them both in, I'm going to add in the trigger price, and I'm going to add in the adjustable stop price. Okay, and I'm also going to move them just up by one in the menu there. So we can see both of them. So now when I place an order, you'll see what those things do. So what I'm going to do now is on my chart here of the US dollar against the Canadian dollar, I'm going to select this buy limit button that I just showed you all the settings for, I'm going to click on that button, then I'm going to submit it on the chart at the price that I want to. So I'll put it at a price lower than the current market price. So I'll put it right there. Now on the chart, you can see our orders have appeared. 
and you can see we have this line here that says starting. What that means is that our target order is a scale out target order. It's not a regular limit order. Now, like I said, this is the way it works in TWS. It's not like certain other trading platforms where you can have, say, multiple targets that are all OCO with the same stop on the other side. It doesn't necessarily work that way. The way you can achieve maximum safety and efficiency is this is the way of doing it here in TWS. Okay, so right now these orders have not been transmitted yet, but if you do look at the quote monitor there, you can see our buy limit parent order and there's its price and there's the quantity. And then we have our target order and our stop order here. Now some of these values are cut off, but I'll maximize it in a second here just so you can see them. If we right click on the target order, we can select this menu, which is view scale progress. But since our order has not yet been transmitted, there's nothing really here yet. All we can see is that our first target order here is going to have a quantity of 60,000 at the price of 138,250. Now, some people, before they transmit their orders, they like to move their order up and down the chart. Now, one thing I want to bring to your attention is this. So take a look at our limit price for our orders and our stop price there. If I move the order on the chart up and down, you can see that the parent order along with the stop price moves its quantity, but the limit price for our target does not move its quantity and our trigger price and adjustable stop price also are not moving their quantity down there. So that is a bit of a limitation and that means that you might have to manually go in and fix those values if you submitted a limit order and then you know, moved its value around. So the best thing to do so you don't have to go in and manually change stuff is make sure that you submit the order at the correct price to start. So let's say you know that your order price is going to be at 138 even like that. What you do is you prompt your order by clicking on the button then you go and find the price you want to submit it at then you click on the price. Now everything should be set and all you will have to do is transmit the order assuming that you've placed it at the correct price and that your offsets are already correctly placed. In the case here we're running a 100 tick stop or sorry it's a 20 tick stop but it's 100 pips in the market. So because I want to show you a working example I'm going to go ahead and place an order closer to the market price. So I'm actually going to reduce the time frame of my chart to a one minute chart and what we're going to do is go ahead and pretty much buy the high here. So I've submitted a buy limit order and I have not transmitted it yet. I can submit the transmit button to transmit that. And we can see our order confirmation here along with our margin impact. So we're buying 100,000 US dollars. The equity of our account is $327,000, which means that we're not even using our entire amount of capital available in the account. What we are doing is we're just doing a simple currency exchange at this point. We're not doing leveraged Forex. I will submit this and I'm actually going to choose to not display this again because I do want to show you some further examples. Okay. So now our order is submitted there in the market and we have our stop order and our target order, which is a scale out order. Now that our parent order has been submitted, if I right click on the target order our target limit order, the price of our first target here is 1.38385, 100 ticks, but it's actually 20 ticks above our parent order. So I'll right click on that target order. I'll, I'll click on view scale progress and we can now see what our target order actually looks like. So it says waiting for parent order to fill and it tells us that our first target here is at a price of 138385 for 60,000 units there. And then we have our following targets, which we've set quite far away. And the reason I set them really, really far away is because I don't actually intend for those to fill. What I wanted to result in with this is a position where the first target can be filled, the stop is adjusted, and then we're left with sort of a runner position where we can come back later and decide what we want to do. If we want to manually close the position or potentially move the stop or move one of the limit orders to a different price and then decide later what we want to do. But the bottom line here is that we have a first target. It scales out the majority of our trade like that 60,000 units. And then we have the stop order that adjusts close to break even when that happens. And then we're left with the runner and the break even stop. So our position is protected. All right. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video, by the way. Thank you for watching this awesome content, unique content. There's no other content like this out there right on.
so I maximized the quote monitor here just so we can see things better now I know you're not seeing the chart but you should also get used to looking at the market in this fashion as well with the actual numbers here I want to point your attention to a couple of things we can see that the stop and the limit order are in the same one cancels another group so when the numbers for the limit and the stop order are the same so what this means is that when one of these orders fills the other one will be canceled on the other side and these are server side orders so now let's look at our trigger price. You can see here that our target price is at 1.38385. Our trigger price for the adjustable stop is also at 1.38385. And then the adjusted stop price in this case is at 1.38290, which is one tick above our limit buy order price in this case. And you can see that it is correctly set. Now again, the issue with this is that if I go ahead and decide to move our parent order, the other values there are not going to change automatically. So if you submitted an order here, now I can see that it's not getting filled, the market is still going up. What I will need to do is if I want these things to be actually one tick above your break even, you'll have to move it so it goes ahead and adjusts to the correct price. So what I'll do in this case is I'll move the order up a couple ticks. Okay, so I just bought the ask up at 138.340. Now, let's look at a couple things here. First of all, I'll show you what the chart looks like, just so we can see some context. This is on my other platform, it's called Sierra Chart. But you can also see the same chart in TWS. Um, I just like this chart a little better. So we see our position there, we see our first target order there, and we, down below we see our stop order. Okay, let's go back to TWS and look at the quote monitor. Now. We have our limit price, which is up at 385, and right now we're trading at 350 or 360. Okay, so what I'm going to do is move my limit order a little bit down because I want it to fill faster. And I'm also going to change the trigger price of my adjustable stop at the same time. And I'm going to change the adjustable stop price as well. So our current break even price is right here, 13834. So I'm going to change the adjustable stop price to be our break even price. So 138, 340, like that. And at the same time, I'm going to change the trigger price to the price that I'm going to change my target to in a second here, which is 138, say 375, which is actually only two ticks lower than where the current market is. And I'm gonna change the target price as well, two ticks lower, and I'm going to update that now. So what we've done is we've moved our target two ticks lower. We moved our adjustable stop price a little bit higher because we ended up moving our parent order up a few ticks after it was submitted. The market is about to fill our first limit order and when that is going to happen, our stop order should also adjust to the new price. And you'll see that here. So look at the stop price here, 138, 185. And when the order fills, which should be in just about a second here, I'm surprised it's not filling. Again, this could happen on demo accounts sometimes. I'm just really surprised it's not filling. There we go. Okay, now it's filled and the stop order has adjusted its price. Do you see that right there? So the target order filled. We now have 40K in our position left. Our stop price has adjusted to the new price, which is our break even price in this case. And if we right click on our scale order and select view scale progress, there we can see the prices of the following two orders in our scale out series here. And unfortunately, this menu is the only way that you can actually see what those prices are. The limit price of your target order here is still going to be set to the price of your first scale out order, but that order has already been filled. So like I said, this menu right here, the scale progress menu is the only way that you can actually see what the prices are of those additional orders. And in this case, I just set them to be super far away. Really, it's with an intent that I don't expect them to be filled. All I wanted was that first target to be filled and the stop order to be adjusted to break even or close to break even. And that's what we have in this case. So I'll go over to my chart again to show you how that occurred. And we can see here our entry took place right here. Our stop was down below originally. I did end up moving the target order down a few ticks. And when that first target order filled, you can see the target order is still displaying there because this is not being handled in this trading platform that I'm showing you here. Um, but when this target order was filled, when the scale out order was filled, 
it adjusted the stop order down here and you can see the stop order is now at our break even price and it is set to our correct position quantity at the same time okay now one of the main things i don't like about this method is that because we're using in this case we set the scale out orders to be quite far away it's always going to make your chart look all weird and scrunched up like this that's why i could be better to not set the offsets for your additional scale out orders to be so far um, in this case, I set them to be like 500 pips. You know, you could set them lower, like say 100 or 200 pips each if you want. Now that you understand how that works, press a like on the video. <laughs> and the second thing is we'll talk about adding to a position. It's going to be a winning position, of course, because you should only add to winning positions or increasing the size of a position um, with this method shown here. I don't recommend just using a plain limit order without any attached orders to increase your position size using this method. The reason for that is because your existing bracket orders here are not going to take into account the, the modification that has been made to your position. Again, we're using native functionality here in TWS. So the way that I would do this is I would submit a new bracket order and I would treat that as a separate position entirely, like your second position that you're entering. So let's say I wanted to add to this position. So I would select buy limit again from our buttons panel and I will go ahead and submit a new buy limit order at the price right there and I know it looks all messy on the chart because it's being scrunched up by those extremely far away scale out orders that we configured but if we look at our quote monitor again I will maximize the quote monitor you can see our new parent order here along with its attached limit and stop order and if we say adjust the quantity of our parent order, let's say we only wanted to add 50,000, you can see that the quantity is also adjusted for the attached target and attached stop of that new order. So this is the way that I would go about adding to a position. I would create a new position bracket order like this so that it has its own stop associated with it and its own target associated with it. And then afterwards, if you want, let's say you just wanted to close your position in one shot. At that point, you can just decide to submit a brand new, you know, limit order on its own by selecting it from here, buy or sell or close, and it'll cancel off all your orders and replace them with that one order to close your position. But that's if you want to decide to close your position. So this is important. If you go ahead and you just select the symbol you're trading and you, you select one of these options. If you select close, be careful selecting close. What it's going to do is it's actually going to cancel off your existing bracket orders. So if you have an existing bracket order like this, where you have your stop order that's been moved to break even and you have a scale out target that's still working. If you selected close position like this, it's going to cancel those off and prompt you with a new limit order. So if you don't want your brackets to be canceled, never select that never select close position the way i have it configured here is my buy and sell orders are just plain limit orders so if i do select those i'll just get a plain limit order like this so let's say for example you wanted to get rid of everything let's say you were along 200,000 and you wanted to close your position you could just make this order quantity 200k and you wanted to sell it off so you wanted to change that to a sell limit order and then you go ahead and you know find the price of the market and then transmit that and at the same time, you can cancel off any existing orders. And that's going to be your closing position order because you've decided in that moment that you want to close your position. Okay, just a couple examples. The way that I configured the default to be just a regular limit order is actually quite simple. I'll just show you what that looks like. I'll go to file global configuration and then I will go to order presets down at the bottom of the global configuration. And I'll select 4x in this case. And Sometimes it'll give you a symbol default, like these ones, Euro or USD, but these don't matter so much. You can just set whatever you need here in Forex. You can see that I've set a default position quantity of 100,000 units. That's just gonna be every time you submit a new order, it's going to default to that quantity. You can change it afterwards before you submit it. The time and force is set to good till canceled, which I would recommend if you do plan to leave orders working in the market overnight or you know when you're not at the desk, the market might close at 5 p.m and then you come back later and the order has been canceled. Make sure you set that to good till canceled so that stuff doesn't happen. And also check this box for allow order to be triggered or activated or filled outside of regular trading hours. It's quite important if you do this type of trading 
okay and then we have our parent or primary order really it's just a limit order and you can set this up if you want in a different way but I just set it to be last price minus 20 ticks but it doesn't really quite matter you can just set this to be last price with nothing there and it'll it'll just prompt it right the last price of the market and that'll be uh, ready to transmit you know and then for the target order in the brackets you can see that we've just disabled them so none and then none so this means that when we submit a, a brand new order by just clicking on the symbol and selecting buy or sell it'll just give us a plain limit order at the last price without any additional bracket orders attached to it when you click ok here it's going to ask you if you want to propagate these presets for the different forex symbols just select okay it's not really a big issue here i was messing with this but it's not a big issue let's say for example you accidentally canceled off a bracket order for your position you may have pressed the wrong button or something you can add the bracket order back to your trade like this you can right click on the symbol that you're trading and you have to have a position in the symbol in this case we do have an open position and then you want to find trade and then create target and stop exit bracket order. If you've already selected this option, it's gonna appear right at the top for you. So I'll click on it there. And now we have this new menu and I did show how to use this in another video, but this is what you will use to resubmit a bracket order onto an existing position that you have that you may have accidentally canceled the bracket order off, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put in a limit order above the current price. I'll put in a stop order below the current price, potentially higher than that because I do want to protect the trade. And that's pretty much it. Once you have the price set and everything, you don't have to do anything else. You can just select preview orders and then transmit them. And now you're pretty much good to go. The price that the stop gets adjusted to is right here. Just make sure that you set this to your break even price or whichever price you want the stop to adjust itself to. And also the last thing is keep in mind that when the stop adjustment takes place, these two numbers here will be gone. You'll no longer see those numbers there because the stop has now converted itself from an adjustable stop to a regular stop. And it's no longer an adjustable stop. Last thing we'll do here before we finish the video is just go ahead and look at the trades that we've taken here today. So I'll maximize this window. And we can see here the timestamps, the symbol, the quantities, as well as the commissions paid for each time you trade. Again, this method is advantageous because it will allow us to have a stop automatically adjust its quantity to the remainder of your position quantity. And that is pretty much the only way to do this in TWS natively without using any custom code. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.